Yeah, Joe, and for, listen, it's great to be here and sorry I couldn't be around last week because we were up in, in Belfast and in Dublin on some prearranged stuff. So, But I think it's probably helpful anyway today because I think the, the story may have moved on a little bit uh, and, and I'd be delighted to talk about it. Look, I think the idea here was there was clearly, a, <clears throat> as you know, a four-hour meeting and a lot of conversations with councillors and everything and I think it was really helpful to get everybody's perspective out there. And the... In some ways, I think for people to understand this, there are two issues going on here, and they're interlinked. One is the actual experience itself, and 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 the and what happens in the building, and the second thing is the actual building. And obviously, the building is supposed to come as a gift to the city, but unfortunately, as with anything, some of these gifts there can be way more complicated, and a lot of the problems that we've been discussing in the council chamber and in workshops and that relate actually to the building and less so to the experience in in some respects. So the idea was that I think the McManus Foundation or IRE, the rugby experience, have made it clear that they would like the experience to continue for three years. That has been their position all along until the closure announcement um, last week. And we know that it loses by the the numbers that we've been presented by these joint experts, um, about 300,000 over three years. So what I was trying to do yesterday was to say, let's just focus on the staff the experience and that first, because the other situation is horrendously complicated and we can talk about that later. And if we can get clarity that we can keep the experience open for the next three years, then that at least allows us the time to do this and take some of the pressure off that's been maybe causing it. And so I made the offer, as there was a lot of people saying, you could use the mayoral fund. And obviously I've used the mayoral fund for lots of other things already, but I still felt it was worth you know, squeezing that budget a bit harder and saying, I've so, covered the losses in the three years. So how would that work in your mind? You would hand from the mayoral budget 100,000 a year across to the rugby experience, but the rugby experience in the building would still not be in the council's ownership. That's right. So the, the hard part is the is the taking of the gift, right? And the taking of the ownership of the building, because that opens up an awful lot of other, as somebody who described it earlier, I think it was Councillor Dunhill, we don't have the batteries to run the building, right? Uh, in our own budgets. And so we need help from national government to deal with those issues, which are much larger than the local budget. What I'm trying to do is deal with the issue of the experience. So people are probably aware that when originally the heads of terms were signed and the conversations before, and everybody, at least in that room, understood that this museum was losing, a, or sorry, this experience, I was told yesterday to tell them, this experience was losing nearly half a million a year. And the McManus family made an offer to cover 1.2 million of that, but leave the council with the other 300,000, which is still a significant amount of money for the council budget. But if the difference between the closure we now have and actually keeping it alive for the next three years is that I would then allocate 100,000 per year to the, I, the rugby experience to cover the gap, then all of the costs that should be now expected for the next three years are basically covered. What happens to the building, though? Well, then we get into a proper conversation. I mean, look, the building is incredibly complex, right? There's a whole load of different issues, some of which have been talked about, some of which have not. First of all, a decision was taken in the construction of the building to actually make it a VAT-registered business, okay? That means that the, of the 30 million or so that was actually spent on the construction of the building, the state gave back 3 million as a VAT refund to the rugby experience. And if you stop running the same business or if you sort of, you know, basically leave the building empty or move it to an, a, a civic purpose that's not actually valuable, like a library, for example, or a university building, then you need to give back this big state, let's call it, to you give to back that three million, right? So this subsidy of three million to the cost of the building has to be paid back. Now, in some ways you could say, well, it's all left hand, right hand, but the nature of local government is if we have to pay that, we have to pay it to Dublin and we don't have the three million. The second problem is that it was set up as a charity in the first places and local authorities cannot own charities, okay? So you have to transfer the building and the business together in order to keep this fat issue going. That essentially means we've got to transfer it into the DAC. This is this famous the tourism DAC. And when you do that, the charity then has to get the charities regulator to approve the move. 
Now, the reason it was set up as a charity, I assume, is either if they, they weren't going to have to pay tax if they started making money, or if other people were contributing money to it, then the state would help because, like a charitable all, all donation. All perfectly legitimate in and Perfectly itself. legitimate, but it was a choice. You could alternatively just set it up as a company paying tax, and that would have actually made this transfer easier because you wouldn't have had the charities regulator having to approve and, it. And, and what is the position with stamp duty on the building? Yeah, so the stamp duty then is, of course... I mean, look, I don't think that the stamp duty is an unreasonable cost for the state to pick. We are getting a gift of the building. We should pay stamp duty. If you get a gift of anything, everybody pays stamp duty. But it's still a four or 500,000 euro cost in a budget for the council, which actually is talking about community well, centres. Now, Barry Hannon, the chief executive of the International Rugby Experience, did a detailed interview here yesterday. And one of the points he made and was very strong about is that there was a joint proposal involved here and that the joint proposal was, he said, changed when it was presented to councillors at the Behind Closed Doors workshop last Wednesday. What is your response to that? Yeah, I think that's not necessarily the right characterization of what happened, okay? Um, and I didn't hear the full interview, I just heard bits of it because it became an issue at the council meeting last night, so I tried to listen back to some of it last night. Um, the When we got to June, okay, um, one of the first phone calls I got as I was taking up my mayoral powers was that I was going to get a briefing on this the following Friday, the first day of my powers, the taking over a building was an executive function, and I might have to make a decision on it then because there was a threat of closure being put over the council by the end of July. So there was an effort to kind of force a decision. Uh, that's your I, interpretation, no, no, I'm sure no, no, the no, IRB would say. Well, there was that's a, what you were told. Okay, okay, there but, was yeah. a threat of closure, okay, that we were told was going to happen, okay, possibly because people were frustrated because this thing had been going on since November, okay? But on my very first day, I was being asked to take over this museum, okay? So what did you do? I, I basically said, as you know, I used to run the Hunt Museum, right? So I had a sort of an insight experience of running a, a you know a building in Limerick that tries to attract. And I will admit that at the beginning when I took over the Hunt thing, we thought we could change the world and we'd have quarter of a million people coming to the Hunt Museum by doing things differently. And over five or six years as chair, I understood how difficult it is to actually get more people past the room or the front so door. So what was your instruction then when you came in as directly elected So mayor? I asked to basically look at this in more detail. Okay, I asked how much money does this museum actually lose? Is it a half a million or is it more? And basically the due diligence that had been run by the team of the council had identified that numbers were falling off, not growing. Okay? So did so, members of the executive then go back to the international rugby experience and say, based on your instruction, we now need to look at this again? Yeah, we went back. I went back myself. We had a phone call with JP McManus, with his team, and we basically had a difference of opinion about how positive or negative we were about the numbers that were expected for the museum to break even. And I needed to know that because I needed to know what was going to be the demands on the council budget if we took over this gift. And the problem, that's why I separate the gift of the building and the, and the experience, because it's the experience that's losing money. The building is actually a very valuable building. OK, but the problem was with the activity that was there losing money, we had to see what services and others we could cut. And we didn't even know how much there would be. And myself and JP agreed that because we believed we may be getting the wrong numbers, we didn't know which one was right, that we would appoint these joint experts or jointly appoint these experts to look at the situation and see how quickly would the museum be able to break even. And Barry Hannon told us yesterday, I think towards the end of August, that there was this joint proposal. Absolutely. So was the joint proposal presented at the workshop to councillors only last week in the correct form? And where is the contention around were there additions yeah, to so, it? Or Yeah, so, so I'm not sure I understand what Barry was getting at in the following sense, okay? The agreement we had was that we needed one set of numbers to work out what the right option would be, okay? The experts gave essentially a series of different options. They workshopped these with Barry and his team and with other people from the council, and they came out essentially with three different scenarios of which they recommended one, okay? Which was that we needed to change the museum. It wasn't ever going to make money as it exists at the moment. That would cost money, and we would actually be best able to do that as soon as possible to move it forward. But then there was a request by the McManus family 
to keep it going as a museum until the Ryder Cup was over. So we then essentially came up with this blended option whereby it would continue to run as a rugby experience until the end of the Ryder Cup. It would okay, give us so, time to do to amend it so, and we move so, on. So where were the extra elements then that the international rugby experience side are are saying weren't part of the joint proposal, but that it's their understanding were presented to councillors at the session last week? Yeah, so, so this is a question of what question you ask of the same facts and what answers you get, right? I think it's probably, and again, I haven't spoken to Barry about this, right? I'm sure Barry is focused, as he would be, on the three years of running the museum and basically handing over the, the, the package to the, the council. I felt that the council, and as did the executive, needed to understand the full story. Okay, We didn't make up numbers. We used the numbers that had come from the executive, or sorry, from the experts. And what we analysed was not just what was the but, losses. But, but so, to be clear, though, that was more than was in the joint No, it's proposal. not. All of those numbers were in the paper already, as I understand it. Okay, They were just presented in a, two, a different scenario. Barry, I think, yesterday, the piece I did here, was constantly talking about the fact that this is 100,000 of a loss and then asked for the council... It's a couple of hundred thousand for the stamp duty. What he wasn't analysing in that moment was the fact that if we change the purpose, we could have a VAT issue. If we change the focus of the museum... Well, well he, he said in the course of the interview that there were three or four points um, that were looked at, discussed, and that there were solutions to all of them. The solution was to go to national government to get money. Okay, And since you say that, the tarnished Micheál Martin said, said to me on the show yesterday that there was no contact from Limerick Council with anyone in government on this issue of funding. Yeah, well, that's not quite true, but it's possible that it wasn't at his level, okay, um, in terms of the rugby experience specifically, okay? One of the hardest challenges that we have in Limerick at the moment, okay, is apart from finding a solution to this, okay, we have many, many problems to deal with Limerick, okay? I know you've spoken on this on the show before. The fact that I wrote to the Tornister and indeed the Taoiseach and all of the people in advance of the budget... On a larger say, envelope of but, funding but the for point infrastructural change. That had that infrastructural fund of £2 billion been given to Limerick as part of the budgetary conversations, we wouldn't have had a four-hour meeting yesterday about this small issue, which is the rugby experience. And it may sound crazy to people to think that I'm describing the rugby experience as a small issue, given that they've heard nothing about it. But yesterday, the reason I was five minutes late to the meeting was I was having a conversation with Eamon Ryan at the train station to try and secure several tens of millions for transport okay. projects. And, and, and that's a really right. important point, Joe, that if we had got that... Now, the, the officials had separately been having conversations with Fall to Ireland and others in order to try and secure the funding because it was For clear. the rugby experience specifically. Yeah, because we asked both the McManus Foundation to come up with some more money, recognising that the numbers were less. Other than the 1.2 million donated. Exactly. I mean, it felt fair to me, and I'm happy to have put the money on the table now, but it felt fair to me that if there was a request that it actually stay open for the Ryder Cup, but it was losing money in Limerick, that we would either be able to do one of two things. Either we could potentially sell the building in the future or mortgage it to right. raise money. But, but, but their position go. is, and they say this was always the case, it was going to be gifted to the council and that it one condition was that it wouldn't be sold on by the council. But I'm going to give a chance to respond yeah. to that. Um, we're going to take a short break. The directly elected Mayor John Moran is with me talking about the international rugby experience this morning. The directly elected Mayor of Limerick, John Moran, is with me. We're talking about the international rugby experience and its future. Uh, Barry Hannon, the chief executive of the IRE, and uh, also Keith Wood, director, were with us in the studio yesterday. And people can hear that interview, by the way, as a podcast and other interviews, including with Tonis and Mio Martin on uh, this uh, issue. Should Barry Hannon have been in the room, the private briefing to councillors last week? Would that have helped? Uh, maybe, but I mean, it was a meeting called by the, the councillors and the, I don't run the agenda for that meeting and I don't do the invitations for the meeting, right? He seems, so, to, have, he seems to have a lot of information from it because he says the councillors weren't given a copy of the presentation, well, but can he I seems ask, to have it yesterday. Wh why, so. why isn't all that information being published so that people in Limerick can fully understand all of this? Yeah, I, I, the answer is I don't know, Joe. I mean, I was, I was actually well, surprised. Can it be put on Limerick.ie today? Well, I was surprised to hear that the councillors didn't actually have the, the document themselves. So, I mean, you know... 
as far as I'm concerned, if we have a meeting that's a public meeting and there are documents that go there, it should be published, right? And in fact, I'll ask when I go down, can we put that actual, you know, the presentation, particularly the one that was given yesterday? With, with all of the figures, because th- there is some contention around that and all of the detail, unredacted, can we see yeah, no, all of the figures here, including the joint proposal? Well, this is the point. The joint proposal is just a collection of numbers and scenarios. I mean, people are referring to it as a proposal. It's not a proposal. It's an analysis of the situation to make sure that two sides who had different views about it... Well, the IRE referred to it as a proposal. But I'm not referring to it like that, right? They may refer to whatever they can. I don't control the language that they use. I wouldn't have used manipulated either, okay? The point was that there is a joint proposal of, let's call it 15, 20 pages, as they describe it. It is, from my perspective, an agreement about the numbers where two parties were disagreeing about the right forecast for a museum that was losing money. It was really a case of how much money it was going to lose, and they had a more optimistic view than we did. Can I ask, if the proposal or the offer had been different, if the offer had been, for example, just for the building, would the council have readily accepted that? Or, the, or is it the experience or is it both the, that, it, yeah. you know, is a challenge? Look, I mean, some of the things that we were asking for, okay, and maybe it's helpful for that, and that's what we're explaining, right? For me, I think one of the most difficult things that was in the terms of the gift, right, was the idea that we could never, ever, ever, in 100 years or in 200 years, sell this building, okay? Uh, it had to be maintained in a civic use, Okay, so these were some of the terms and conditions. I can understand why they were actually proposed. But Katanish just said yesterday uh, that, you know, that sort of thing does happen. He uh, quoted examples of when he was a councillor in Cork himself. And he also said that amenities of this kind generally don't make a profit, but they have a wider value. No, but it's a different thing. If you If you have a building that you own, that you could, in theory, sell in the future, even if you don't want to, it allows you to raise finance. Okay, this is a council that doesn't have the budget to build a community centre in Herbertstown, right? I have asked every day by people for different things and I am really having difficulty having to say no because the numbers just So are you there. saying then that if the building was free of that condition, we that while the intention money. wasn't to sell it, it could be used to leverage funding for other exactly. things? Exactly. So if it was going to cost us, which it could cost six but million... But is that building the only requirement there? I mean, can, can, can that not be done in lots of different ways, of the leverage? But, but, but it's going into a designated activity company. So I can't mix assets from Newcastle West to fund a designated activity company. But if the building could have been mortgaged, the five or six million that it's going to cost to travel the road from today to when that might break even could be leveraged off of the building. Well, well can I ask what the designated activity company Discover Limerick and the um, assets or facilities it already has, are they making money? Is King John's Castle making money? It's on a path. It's going to require another four or five well, million. Well, couldn't the same thing be said about the rugby experience? Of course it can. But we could, in theory... If we wanted to leverage King John's Castle, right? You wouldn't do it in terms of a medieval building. But in a hundred years' time, you might want to do it. The point is that it was sold from Shannon Development to the council, okay? There, there were movements of assets around. There are different purposes. And it was, an un, it was a restriction that was put, and up to at least last night still remained a red line from the negotiations. And that was, I think... Because I I said to Barry Hannan yesterday, is there room for negotiation here? And he said, we've been talking about this for 13 months. And from his perspective, representing the IRE, the situation was untenable. Uh, Since you made that offer last evening, has it been communicated to the IRE? Has there been any response? Well, it was clear from the meeting yesterday that the IRE were on the call because it's one or two occasions different people popped up that are representatives of the... Of so the have you heard so from they them? Heard. I haven't heard anything from them this morning. I was at a meeting on housing all morning. So, so there was a suggestion that Barry Hannon, for example, would be invited to a further briefing. Has that invitation been extended? Well, uh, Joe, this meeting finished at 8 o'clock last night and I was at a different meeting at 8 o'clock this morning. I haven't spoken to Pat Daly or anything. I mean, it is for the Cahir look, or sorry, the, the Prief Cahir to invite them to a council meeting, not for us. Would right? it be helpful? I think it would. I mean, look, we want to have a continuing um, conversation. We didn't pull the plug on this. I mean, there was a, it was a council meeting workshop last week. I think there was an understanding from the councillors, and I don't want to put words in their mouth, that the situation was more complex than it had been presented back in April when the joint press release was issued saying this was a 30 billion million euro gift to the city and none of the other issues were, were addressed. In the last four months, 
um, since we've done the due diligence, since we've got the experts in, there is a much greater understanding of the complexity of what's okay. being required and the solutions I, that could be there right, if people be, will talk. Because of the importance of this issue, I'm going to ask you to stay through one more break and uh, we'll give this a few more minutes and see uh, where else it will take us. The directly elected Mayor of Limerick, uh, John Moran, is with me talking about the future of the international rugby experience on O'Connell Street. In the end, is this not your call? Does it not fall within the remit of the executive, i.e. you as the de facto chief executive? You could decide to proceed with this. I could, and if I decided to proceed with this, it would mean allocating pretty much six or seven million of the mayoral budget to just this project. Okay? So I would say to the council, you don't need to worry about your own budget. I would say to the national government, you don't need to come up with any money. We are not going to proceed with six or seven million of the projects that was identified in an election with the people of Limerick were priorities. And so I don't think that's the so, right So point. has the fundamental change here, frankly, been your election? Because obviously the international rugby experience feel they had a deal, in essence, and that that deal is now not proceeding. And the key change was you were elected as uh, directly elected mayor. Yeah, I, I don't think it's necessarily that I was referred to that elected as directly elected mayor, I think it was the case that now we have put in place a structure that looks forward five years about what's the right decision. We've put in place a a structure that has one person who has travelled to the county to know all the things that need to happen. And, And I've already said that what I want to do is have a more open and transparent budgetary process where we think every time we spend money about what we're not spending money on and what is the opportunity cost. And I think, I mean, look, I have no doubt Dando Patton, Gordon and his team, they had already identified some of the issues that were cropping up into due diligence. What changed was that I asked for external validation of those numbers because the other side weren't seeing the same picture. Now, I know Barry talked yesterday about all these meetings. He's gone to 15, 16 meetings because myself and JP agreed that the teams would meet weekly to try and put some urgency into this, right? And then we've moved, I think, more in four months than we did in the previous eight. But the reality is, is that their position hasn't moved one iota since June okay. 14th, so even though the situation y- is worse. Do you believe at this point then that from the 1st of January, that building will be empty? No, I don't actually, to be honest. I think that one way or the other, I think with JP and his team, they will find some use of that building anyway, right? Whether it's on the 1st of January or the 30th of June. I hope that after yesterday's conversation, we've managed to decouple two complicated issues, okay? He would like, or the family and the IRE would like this museum to stay open for three years. We would like it to be active for the three years. We'd like the staff that are in there to continue but not to have building. jobs. But, but the building complexity can be parked. And that's what I was trying to do with yesterday's conversation and offer, is let's focus on the immediate priority. Okay, and I did congratulate or thank the McManus Foundation for giving us those extra three months because they had threatened to close it in October after the workshop. Well, they, right? they, I'm sure they would contest the word threatened. But anyway, well, but, but the point letter, is on, on the We bill. got a letter saying that they were going to close on the, it. So, on, well, so well, you and can and, and in, the, in the end, I suppose that's their remit. That you know, that's right. that their right to I do that, that because, I, as you say at the moment, the council don't building, own that. Right? But so the, the, the building itself, so a, a final and brief point. Will there be talks? I mean, are both sides going to sit down and see if you can hammer out yeah, something look, Joe, that you can announce soon? Joe, after we got the letter, okay, I reached out to try and have conversations with Mr. McManus or the senior negotiators, and it wasn't taken up as okay. an offer, okay? So it's the still offer there. Is that still offer there. is there. And now, right. having put something more on the table yesterday, hopefully that finds us a solution so that on the 2nd of January, you and I can go, well, actually, I won't be here on the 2nd of January, but on the 5th of January, you and I can go into the museum and actually throw a ball, a rugby ball. And I'd love to be able to do that.